What is up everybody, Solomon here. Happy Tuesday. If you see any scam ads on this video, please do not participate. I saw one of the best tweets that I've seen in a very long time today. Also found some Ripple uh, connections with uh, companies like Tech Mahindra, ACI Worldwide is making moves, Currency Cloud, etc. We're gonna get into that in a second here. But I wanna get into this tweet here. This is from Crypto Whale. This is at Crypto Whale. So give him a follow if you're on Twitter, him or her or however that's identified. So, the only project in the entire market that is pushing for crypto regulations is XRP. And we all know how much Ripple has been pushing for regulatory clarity. We all know how much Ripple is tied into the system and how deeply they've been working with regulators in this space. I'm gonna keep reading. They know that once these regulations are added, it will completely annihilate almost every other altcoin, and make XRP's demand skyrocket. I believe the clarity, you know, will be the major portion of uh, that demand skyrocketing because these institutions that are already tied into RippleNet will not have a clear path forward. All right, I'm going to keep reading. Many criticize XRP for being too centralized, although this transparency is what governments like, and I would go as far as to say what these banking institutions like as well. Do you not think that these banking institutions want to see a quarterly report, want to see where these escrows are going, want to see how the funds are, are being deployed into the ecosystem, et cetera, et cetera? They 100% do. Do you think they're going to use something that is completely, you know, has no perceived, even though it's not a real body because XRP is decentralized, obviously, but it, a perceived body behind it? So while other projects are focused on getting a quick batch of new investors to exit scam. We saw that through, uh, through uh, Sushi over the past few days. Ripple has quietly been working with government agencies to ensure compliance. And we've seen that through the, the uh, Cons uh, Consumer Financial, uh, Financial Protection Bureau, the remittance rule document that directly mentioned XRP, et cetera, et cetera. Once Bitcoin and alts have finalized their correction, uh, planning on increasing my exposure, okay. I think this is a fantastic tweet though. I mean. And I believe very much so that regulations have been held back. And I think that these financial institutions, the big ones, and you know governments across the board, why do you think regulations have been held back? Do you think that they don't understand what the clarity needs to be at this point? Or do you think that they want to get caught up enough so that when the clarity is provided, they can still survive? That's my opinion, at least. So take that however you want to take it. All right. Tech Mahindra. And Tech Mahindra is a Ripple partner. I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker. This is my third try at this video today. So Tech Mahindra to run healthcare, aerospace, and telecom offerings on Amazon's managed blockchain. Tech Mahindra is a pretty big IT organization out of India. They've got over 200,000 employees, I believe 5.5 or $6 billion in revenue as of this, this year or last year. So, but... AWS, we can see right here, this is YXRP, decentralized, over 25 global validators operated, operated by institutions like MIT, Microsoft, AWS, and CGI. Now, Tech Mahindra is an interesting organization too because they're one of those organizations where, similar to what NASA uh, has had about Ripple in the past, uh, NASA deleted a, a lot about that you know the the foundation the foundational settlement layer uh being util, utilizing uh ripple but tech mahindra is kind of the same a lot of their documents mentioning ripple and their partnerships take you to that error gate uh error gateway that 404 you've gotten to a bad you know a bad website or whatever so they've deleted a lot of them it kind of makes you wonder this one's from the middle of 2019 though so a little bit newer this is bps i think this is business process uh solutions or business process services dot techmahindra.com and uh, our dif differentiators a simple engagement model for end-to-end -end blockchain implementation key takeaways who needs it banks that are on the hunt for 10x better faster and cheaper solutions enabled by new technology what should they know disruption may come from a mix of regulation and blockchain systems we just talked about regulation right now this says down here below we have also partnered with a number of fintechs and key niche players in this space, like Ripple, SkewChain, et cetera. Now, SkewChain pay attention to too, as well, because I believe that is an R3 initiative. So they're obviously Ripple partners. Tech Mahindra is partnered with Ripple. 
We're going to get into this OMFIF document. This is the official Monetary and Financial Institutions Forum. They are a big forum. They've got many of the big bankers, in the, uh, you know, across the board here that are members. And this was a document that they put out today. Digital currency in the new Cold War. Just as the U.S. Treasury, and, and I try to keep a lot of this stuff on this channel a little bit higher level just so that people that aren't as familiar with digital assets can understand what's happening with digital assets and digitization across the board as far as finance is concerned. Now, this is directly through OMFIF. Uh, this is a blog post on there, Evolving International Monetary and Financial System. Just as the U.S. Treasury was mailing out physical stimulus checks, the People's Bank of China began its beta testing of a national digital currency, digital currency, in four cities. Future economists will look back on these counterpoints as the start of the digital currency era. It talks about the uh, alternatives to fiat being speculative up until late August of last year, where at the 2019 Jackson Hole Symposium, the then Bank of England Governor Mark Carney stated that a new form of global digital currency could be the answer to the establishing dominance of the dollar in today's global monetary system. And make no mistake about it, they are talking about the establishing dom dominance of the U.S. dollar. Instead, Carney said the international monetary system could use a synthetic hegemonic currency. A proportion of the world's financial transactions would no longer be dollar-denominated, and the demand for dollars would fall. Now, whatever your opinion is on a global currency, that's fine. That's your opinion. My opinion is it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit uh, scary in my opinion. But I do believe, and I, and I don't believe just in one world currency. I don't think that will ever happen with all the red tape that would be involved in that. Now, maybe that would happen in 50 or 100 years from now. Who knows? But uh, something that could bridge all of the currencies globally from a digital currency standpoint and that's why I believe that XRP could play a role in this system, uh, will play a role in this system. And my opinion is in exotic corridors to start. And we know that they're at Ripple, the company, is very much so into banking the unbanked, uh, you know, leveling the playing field for all of these uh, individuals and all of these nations that, that cannot tie into the financial system. Uh, but, you know, synthetic hegemonic world currency, that is, he is talking about a world currency there. So... Moving on to uh, this, this is Ping An, and this is leveraging fintech for small and micro businesses. If you are not aware, Ping An is a giant in China, and their subsidiary, OneConnect, you will see in a second here, partnered with SBI Japan. SBI Japan also has SBI Ripple Asia. Uh, they are very much so developing on XRP and utilizing or trying to utilize XRP via on-demand liquidity. Uh, we know that uh, MoneyTap runs on RippleNet. So, but I want to read into this. Ping An, leveraging fintech for small and micro businesses or SMEs, okay? And this all has to do with digitization as well, okay? Small and medium sized financial institutions are likely to, are unlikely to have the financial resources or the research and development capabilities to develop their own technologies. Now, this is how big OneConnect is, and OneConnect is the is Ping An's blockchain and AI uh, portion of that group. So very interesting to me that this basically through this interview is stating that OneConnect had facilitated two trillion transactions for customers of other financial institutions, including 171.5 anti-fraud checks, 5.2 billion credit risk assessments. It also served 100% of major banks. 99% of city commercial banks, and 53% of insurance companies in China, collectively reaching hundreds of millions of end customers, according to Ping An. That's huge, though. Uh, but if you're not aware, OneConnect and SBI, and OneConnect is Ping An's subsidiary that has you know 100% of major Chinese banks, 99% of commercial banks, etc. We just saw that. OneConnect and SBI formed a joint venture for Japanese banks. And this was later in 2019. This, I think, was December. So this is called uh, SBI OneConnect now, this company. And it's all going towards digitization, 100% uh, across the board. And we know what SBI is building on. OneConnect's Japanese li link is not limited to the uh, partnership with SBI Holdings. SBI's vision, or SoftBank's vision fund, 
<clears throat> SoftBank's Vision Fund is an investor in OneConnect, along with two other Ping An subsidiaries. For Stugart, SBI's investments in an enterprise blockchain firm R3, securities tokenization firm Securitize, which Ripple also invested in, and insurance blockchain firm B3i. We know how much uh, SBI Japan is tied in with Ripple. All right, again, we're seeing digitization, modernization. India's largest bank modernizes its, uh, modernizes its payment switching system with ACI Worldwide Technology. State Bank of India, and they had been an ACI partner in the past, but they seamlessly updated and expanded their payment switching system. Using ACI's retail payment solution to meet its requirement of processing over 30 million daily transactions. State Bank of India is the largest public sector bank in India, so they're huge. And we can see right here, ACI obviously supports initiatives such as Ripple. Uh, ACI also supports real-time schemes around the world. Uh, any bank can use real-time payment systems to support SWIFT, FIN, GPI, DLT, for example, Ripple, wire and immediate payments. All right, International Chamber appoints leader for digital standards which is fantastic. This is the International Chamber of Commerce. This is digitization across the board here. Digitization is critical to strengthen the, glo uh, the global trade and supply chains that create jobs, development, and prosperity. I was interested in the seed funding of this. To get it going, it has been seed funded by the government of Singapore. And we all know the Monetary Authority of Singapore has worked very closely with Ripple and the Asian Development Bank. Now, Asian Development Bank has been busy today. MasterCard and Asian Development Bank build multi-stakeholder alliance for Asian supply chains. You don't think that deals in digitization? I guarantee you it is. So we also see here, uh, uh, this is just a little bit of scope, the board of governors at the Asian Development Bank, uh, you know, Steve Mnuchin sits on the board. This is huge. It's so many countries. Uh, I think it's like 50 some. But, you know, you can go through this and just read about how big that organization is. This is a document that they put out in 2019, okay? This is Distributed Ledger Technology and Digital Assets, Policy and Regulatory Challenges in Asia. This is June of 2019. This is the most important part of this entire video. The question of whether a given crypto asset will be recognized as part of the formal payment system will largely depend on how it is meant to be used in a given jurisdiction. Bitcoin and Ethereum often fall outside, while Ripple and XRP often fall in, fall within the formal system. This is because formal payment systems are generally closed loop systems. If some crypto assets can be integrated into the formal payment system, they can then be used as a settlement vehicle, not only as a medium of exchange. Bitcoin and Ethereum often fall outside, while Ripple and XRP often fall within the system. If certain crypto assets can be integrated within the system, they can be used as a settlement vehicle. Now again, this is a document they put out in 2017, the Asian Development Bank. An example of this is Ripple, an effort to make interbank settlement processes faster and cheaper by connecting multinational banks via a single shared ledger. Interbank settlement process is faster and cheaper within the formal system. XRP often falls within the system. So we'll see where that goes. This is a Congress bill also that I found today. This is through OPM. OPM is the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, serves as the, ch as the chief human resources agency and personnel policy manager for the federal government. And this committee that put out this bill, the study should include but is not limited to an examination of the feasibility of employing distributed ledger technology such as blockchain. Committee directs OPM, who we just talked about, to undertake a study and produce a report on how blockchain technology can help improve its IT security and infrastructure. Now we've got the International Chamber of Commerce again here. And one last thing on this. They have this initiative now called, called Remittances in Crisis, how to keep them flowing. This is supported by the United Nations. This is supported by multi-governments. This is on a large geopolitical scale here. Remittances in Crisis, how to keep them flowing. Talking about the pandemic and how, all the problems that are going on are remittances across the board. 
So these are the state members of this. Switzerland and UK are the co-leads. Many of these exotic corridors flowing right into here. International organizations, the World Bank. We know the World Bank's talked directly about Ripple, has talked about XRP in the past. We just saw the Asian Development Bank talked about XRP. UNICEF, we know what UNICEF is, obviously. Uh, Nomad, this is uh, right on Nomad's website as well. Uh, ICC, IOE, I mean, you get the picture, right? You get where this is going. Last but not least, a couple of generic news to uh, topics here. Crypto bank Ziglu gains financial conduct authorities EMI license launches peer-to-peer -peer payments. Don't believe they support XRP yet, but I do believe that they're about to support XRP and Ethereum as well, so that's awesome. Fintech startup Revolut launches the financial app in Japan. Uh, they've already tried it with 10,000 users. We know that Revolut supports XRP in the UK. I don't believe it's in the US yet. I'm curious to see if it is going to be in Japan or not. Last but not least, Currency Cloud partners with Dunbridge Financial, Financial for foreign exchange and international payments. And Currency Cloud is a pay ID initiative, I believe. Uh, they're going to offer multi currency e wallets, electronic wallets in their customer's name, allowing both corporates and individuals to hold multiple currencies, as well as make and receive payments from around the world. It's pretty clear to see where this is going. It's pretty clear that it's when, not if, uh, you know, and that you don't even need to speculate to understand where this is going. I'm not going to sit here and tell you XRP is going to go to the moon because I wouldn't do that. But I do know that the ecosystem being built and the corresponding relationships are very, very interesting. And paying attention is going to be key in this space in the long run. We're always going to see speculative pumps. We're always going to see things, you know, parabolically rising and then, you know, correcting down unsustainably uh, and people just completely losing out uh, on, on their money because they're, they're doing whatever they're doing. I'm in this space for the long term. I definitely diversify. I know I talk mostly about Ripple and XRP on this channel, but, you know, it's all about diversity. But it's very easy to find things that Ripple's tied into because they're tied into quite a bit. You know, it's it's almost like playing the what is it the the six or the whatever the degrees of Kevin Bacon. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's news tomorrow, I will present it. I would I, I am expecting that this fall and this winter that we see some some very interesting things come out, and I hope that we get some clarity as far as regulations are concerned because it definitely appears that the big boys. Uh, the big players here, governments and uh, financial service providers across the board are gearing up for something big. So thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy. Have a good night. Later.